Hey everybody, this is Aaron Whitehead. Welcome to Learn to Play the Piano. This is lesson number 20 in a series of short lessons. In this video, we'll focus on using music notation to learn a song. In our last video, we learned what to do with our right and left hand if we're going to sing the song Amazing Grace. In this video, we're going to learn to play that song using music notation. Now let's do a quick reminder of how the keys of the keyboard line up with the notes of the staff. Now this diagram shows you how the two middle octaves of the piano line up on the musical staff. So the lowest note we'll focus on is the note C, the octave octave below middle C. And then we'll have middle C, which is in the center of both the treble and bass clef. And then you have the C, an octave above middle C. And everything we learn in this lesson will fall in those two octaves. And the bass clef, the bottom half of the grand staff, is what we will play with our left hand. And that's these seven notes just below middle C. The treble clef, the top half of the grand staff, is what we'll play with our right hand, and it's these eight notes, including middle C and the octave above. And for our purposes, we are going to use a key signature. A key signature is a way of identifying what key a piece of music is in by labeling the sharps and flats at the beginning of the staff. So a staff with no sharps and no flats would be in the key of C because the key of C has no sharps and no flats. We're gonna do Amazing Grace in the key of F. F has one flat. B flat. So rather than having to label every B in the score with a flat mark, we can simply put it at the beginning of the score and we'll know that every B we come across is actually a B flat. So on the keyboard, the notes that we will actually be playing will not look like this because this does not have a B flat. Instead, they will look like this. And the song Amazing Grace is in what we call 3-4 time. The top three represents how many beats are in a measure. There are three beats in each measure. The bottom four tells us that the quarter note gets the beat. And that's because in fractions, the denominator four tells you that it's a quarter of something. And to show the distinction between each measure, we'll use what we call bar lines. So in between each bar line will be three beats, three beats to a measure. The space in between the bar lines is called a measure. And to represent silence in music notation, we use what we call rests. This bottom rest represents an entire measure of silence, sometimes called a whole rest. This top rest we call a half rest, and it represents two beats of silence. Now you'll notice in that top measure we have a half rest. That takes up two of the beats, and we have one more beat remaining. That remaining beat is the first note of the song Amazing Grace. And because it doesn't occur on the first beat of the measure, we call it a pickup because of the way that it leads into the first beat of the next measure. Now before we begin working through the song, there's one more thing we need to talk about, something that we'll encounter about halfway through the song, and that's a tie. A tie is when two notes are connected together and it's represented by a curved line that connects the two note heads. When you encounter a tie, you play the note for the combined length of all of the notes that are tied together. So halfway through the song, we'll encounter two measures that look like this, and when we play it, it'll sound like this. Pay attention to the way the C in the right hand is tied from one measure into the next measure. All right, now we're ready for our song. I would suggest that you play through it at least three different times. The first time you play along with it, I would suggest that you play just the left hand part. Once you get that down, try just the right hand part. And after you've mastered both parts, then you can combine them. Both parts together will sound like this. And if you'd like to be able to download a hard copy of this arrangement, please visit our website. And we hope you enjoyed lesson number 20. And if you did, you might also enjoy our book, which is now available on Amazon or our website, thepianochordbook.com. We also have an interactive app available with a lot of great information available on iTunes and Google Play. And please join us next time where we'll learn more about seventh chords. Thanks, God bless, and see you next time.